Hi everybody, it's Russ from My Hammers 11. I hope you're all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon so you're notified of any time we put new content up. Obviously, we have videos going up daily, but sometimes two, three times a day. I don't want you to miss any of these great guests we've got coming up. So please make sure you hit that bell icon so you're made aware of as soon as you, uh, as soon as you put new videos on. We've got some amazing guests this week, including today's guest. Um, one of only, I think, five West Ham players who played in the FA Cup final, won the FA Cup in 1980, and then were part of the famous 85-86 season, um, which I was absolutely astounded by. Uh, he played 368 times for the club, um, 41 goals. Um, he debuted in 1976, I think, for the first team. It's Jeff Pike. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Hi, Russ. I'm very well, thank you. How very is... Under the strain of uh, being locked down. Exactly. Have you taken up any new skills or anything? You know, I mean, I was talking to Martin Allen the other day and he, he's done a bit more gardening than he usually does. Well, we, we have done a bit more gardening. I've been doing a bit of uh, DIY, um, catching up with some stuff that needed to be done. But uh, one, one of the, um, uh, I suppose you do some random things, don't you, when you're, um, uh, when you're in this sort yeah. of situation. And uh, my daughter uh, is, is quite um, a talent at uh, uh, poetry. And she started to, to do uh, some uh, poems related to the, the situation that we're in. Oh, wow. As a consequence of that, we all sort of joined in. At the moment, I've got a booklet that's 20-odd uh, pages long with uh, poems from my daughter, myself, uh, my, uh, my youngest son, my, my grandchildren have contributed, oh, wow. and a friend of ours, because our eldest lad, uh, Anthony, who was born three weeks after the cup final in 1980 was 40 yeah. last weekend Yeah, of course. Um, uh, on the 31st of May. So uh, there's been some poems going around for, uh, to celebrate his 40th birthday oh, wow. as well. So um, yeah, it's been, it, it, is, it is random, but yeah. um, you know, it's quite, uh, quite amusing when every now and again you get a new one come through on the, uh, on the WhatsApp group. On the WhatsApp group, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, I've, there's two things I've, I've, that are random that I've started. One is a YouTube channel, hence why we're on it. Um, and second one is the ukulele. I started to, oh. for some reason, I started to play the ukulele. And obviously the first song I learned was I'm Forever Blind Bubbles. You know, it's just had yeah, to be done. Well, and I'll probably be on the, when we all get back, when the 60,000 get back on the pitch, I'll do, I'll do the halftime entertainment, I think. You know, sort of <laughs> proper George Foreman's, George Foreman, George yeah. Foreman B, not George Foreman, I'm not going to box that. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, yeah, no, it's, a, it's a bit of a bugger when it comes to birthdays, isn't it? Particularly a 40th birthday, you know, trying to celebrate it. It, it is, but, but you know, it was in the situation where um, uh, our esteemed leader, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, suggested that the, on the Monday we was able to go and visit people. Uh, you know, outside of that or within the family, but, you know, social distance, yeah. you know, six people maximum. Yeah. Uh, and it was 24 hours before. So we cheated a little bit. Yeah. But um, we drove all the way to Bristol because he lives in Bristol with his, yeah. with his wife and daughter. And um, we, we arrived, we spent uh, three hours sitting in the garden, social distancing. Yeah. Um, uh, had a, had a, um, a glass of Pims with him to celebrate his birthday. And... He was, uh, I think he was, he was visibly shocked and, and emotional when we arrived, you yeah. know? So yeah. it was, uh, I mean, what, what my wife and I did, we, uh, a few months back, uh, pre-Christmas, uh, I got contacted by the, someone from the PFA about um, selling any old football shirts that I didn't want. Sure. Uh, so I, I, I offered our three children, our three kids, an opportunity to choose at one of these um, uh, shirts if they wanted before I, I sold them on yeah. uh, which I didn't do in the end but he chose uh, um, uh, Anthony chose a shirt that I wore in 1976 uh, out in, in America yeah. playing in the NASL uh, in bicentennial year and it's uh, a shirt that I played in uh, against New York Cosmos when Pelé was playing for them oh, wow. so uh, um, uh, I've got a photograph that sits proudly on my uh, um, in my dining room of myself and another one of my teammates plus Pele in possession of the ball and I got that copied and we put that in the frame as well uh, and then when we got there we uh, my wife and I hid behind the frame because it was quite big uh, and opened the back gate and started singing happy birthday to him so it was it was quite a shock for him and you know but uh, and quite emotional but yeah. we had a lovely lovely three hours and then uh, 
um, and then got in the car and drove back home again. <laughs> yeah, it's a trouble, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I've had I've had two May May's a busy time for me. I have my wife's birthday and my daughter's birthday, so yeah, we had to sort of be creative, don't you, a little bit. So yeah, so so my daughter had a social distancing party for some of her friends on the drive. Moved all the cars, <laughs> got a uh, an ice cream man to turn up and stuff, and uh, yeah, and we and my wife we we converted the back garden into like the outdoor cinema but like, i bought a projector and stuff but you gotta make doing it and i think actually it's in a weird way there's it, been sort of more creativity as you said that's like going and it's surprising your son you know you could have gone for a meal yeah. you know in in easier times it's it sure. just it, it's a lot more effort but it, it pays more it's it, it's more meaningful if that makes sense yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely and you know it was a similar situation in april with because uh, my, my wife's birthday was in april oh, yeah. and um uh, my youngest lad who lives across the road uh or sort of 10 minutes away his uh, uh three children our three grandchildren uh, got three pieces of flip chart paper together but, uh, and wrote uh, and did a, a drawing and put happy birthday on there and then they came round and rung the doorbell, had already put balloons up around the outside, and my wife answered the door, and they, they played uh, Stevie Wonder's Happy Birthday yeah. as loud as they possibly could on the car uh, radio, <laughs> and the kids were standing there singing Happy Birthday with this banner. So we ended up sitting on the driveway, and then other people turned up, and next door neighbors were giving her cards, which would ne- which they'd never done before. No, yeah. um, well, one of the neighbors bought her a bottle of um, Prosecco, you know, and it, it, everybody, the, the whole community has become, I mean, we're, we're in a situation now where hopefully this weekend we're going to do a, a, a quiz with the, the neighbours uh, on our side of the road and on, on the road opposite. When it was VE day, we was out there till nearly midnight, sitting in the road, social yeah. distancing, you know, uh, having a glass of wine. And it was, it was uh, so we, we've created a community, uh, yeah. a community that was already there. Yeah. You know, exactly. um, no, but, definitely. You know we, we're, we're co- communicating with them much more. And as a consequence of that, we're going to hopefully do this quiz at the weekend where we're all going to sit outside in the in our driveways and and uh, and do a quiz. So oh, it could brilliant. be quite interesting if it's yeah, raining. But... I've, heard, I've heard a cul-de-sac doing a, um, I can't remember where, it might have actually been on a TV show, so I mentioned it, but it was a cul-de-sac and they were doing bingo. And they had a guy at, the, guy at one end of it, I mean, like, a, you know, one of those loud, loud hailers calling out all the bingo numbers and everyone had the cards the same type of thing it's, it's amazing it is amazing and yeah, that's how this channel started you know it's like it was a, like the sense of the community the west ham community everyone talks about yeah. you know the west ham family but yeah. this is an epitome of that you know in terms of talking to fans all over the world about their memories of west ham and now talking to more and more players like yourselves ex-players about their their memories of, of playing for West Ham and, and the players that they enjoyed playing with. And it's just snowballed because of this sort of West Ham community feeling. Sure. And when we all get back, when that will be, I don't know, the 60,000 turn up to London Stadium and Bubbles is played and everyone sings along will be lovely. So I think that's, I think football is almost secondary to the, 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 sort of the, the camaraderie and the, and the friendship amongst the West Ham lot. That's the way it's coming through. I've heard people doing, yeah. there's this one guy I interviewed the other day, he's doing a Zoom party with all of his mates he sits around, his season ticket holders, to watch the Wolves <laughs> game and stuff like that. And it's absolutely yeah. brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So for yeah. you, Jeff, obviously, you know, massive massive period at the at the club, you know, as I said, over, you know, 300, over 360 games for the club in, in total. The first question I ask all West Ham ex players is, is is why West Ham? Why and obviously you you're at Thurrock, you're at Gideon Park, I live in Gideon Park now. Um, but you're at Thurrock, you're at Gideon Park Rangers, and then obviously then you went to into West Ham. Uh, why why West Ham? Why? It? Um, well, uh, originally uh, uh, and it's uh, it's quite a long, not drawn out story, <laughs> but there's a, a, a number of things that contribute to it. Sure. My my. Uh, my mum's parents and her brother and her sister all lived in uh, near Victoria Park. Yeah. So they were around the corner from, from Upton Park and uh, they were always West Ham fans. So I suppose that's where it initially the, the, uh, the seed was initially sown. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then what happened was I, my mum and dad moved out of um, uh, Clapton and moved out to uh, South Ockenden in Essex. Yeah. And, um, uh, as a, uh, so I went, uh, the school I went to uh, had a teacher called Mr. Davis and God rest him. I went to his funeral a few years back now. Mm. 
but he was the instigator of the whole thing, really, because as an eight-year-old, I was playing in the school in the school football team, but I was playing on the left wing. Now, whether he put me on the left wing, keep me out of the way or not, I'm not 100 <laughs> percent sure. But um, it was. Uh, but what he did was he wrote to West Ham and said, "You need to see this boy." So um, I then got contacted by West Ham, and they said, "Come down on this particular date on a on a Tuesday, for example." Yeah. Because uh, the the um, uh, the young players. Um, trained on a Tuesday and Thursday evening, go down to Chadwell Heath. So my dad took me down there and the, the very first person I spoke to was John Lyle. Wow. Because uh, John was a youth team coach at the time. And um, uh, he asked me my name and I said who oh, I was. And he asked me how old I was. And I was, I think I was nine or 10 at that particular time. Uh, I, well, it was 10 because I think I was, it was uh, uh, 66 when I went there. And, um, he, uh, he said, uh, well, you're a little bit young, but join him while you're here, which is what I did. And at the end of it, he said, make sure you're back here Thursday. <laughs> so uh, um, I went back. Uh, I then, um, uh, because my parents were both working uh, as a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, et cetera, et cetera, I used to have to get two or three buses from South Ockenden to get to Chapel Heath. You know, nowadays you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't expect that to happen no, from a, no, no, no. Uh, a child of, of that age. Uh, and then it got to about sort of 15 years of age and um, I've been at the club for quite some time and uh, I got invited to, uh, um, uh, to go for a trial at Ipswich um, and it was a week's trial and they were putting us up uh, you know, overnight in a, in a B&B &B, mm. um, around the corner from the main ground and at the end of this week they played a game on the main pitch. And uh, at the end of the game, uh, Bobby Robson, uh, again, God rest his soul, mm. came up to me and said, um, I'd like to sign you as an apprentice. So I said, well, I said, I'm not sure. I said, because I'm at West Ham at the moment and I don't know what's going to go on with them. He said, well, if you sign for me, he said, you'll be in my first team within 18 months. So for a, a 15 year old to be told yeah. that by, you know, someone of Bobby Robson's Robson, standing yeah. is, you know, whoa, hold on a minute. <laughs> well, I, I came back home uh, that day and um, two days later, I rang a, a fellow you probably have heard of, a fellow called Wally St. Pierre. Yeah. Um, Wally was a chief scout at the time and I, I rang him up and I said, um, uh, Wally, do, do you know what's happening? You know, am I going to get an apprenticeship or not? Because Ipswich want to sign me. And uh, he said, uh, uh, I'll ring you back. And the, the, um, the phone rang 10 minutes later and Wally said, yeah, we're going to sign you. So yeah. obviously the, 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 the input of, of Bobby and all the Ipswich thing long, yeah. instigated West Ham signing me. I mean, Bobby rang me three times that following week uh, <laughs> personally to say what's happening because he wanted to sign me that much. So it was one of those things where, you know, it was in the balance at one particular mm -hmm. time, but there was only one outcome in my eyes and that was yeah. West Ham if they wanted to sign me. Uh, yeah. And that, that's, how it, that's how it all came about, really. And, and the rest is history, as they say, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> well, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then obviously, yeah, from then, obviously, yeah, you went, obviously you went, you went, 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 went to America for the, for the for, yeah, on loan for a bit. I mean, how did, I mean, I'm, I'm, cause I'm, I'm so uh, not new to it, but I'm learning all these. How did that happen? Because obviously, you know, if you're from South Ockenden, then you're off to the States. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was, I was at the club and uh, I was sort of in a, I, I've been playing in reserves, et cetera, mm. et cetera. And that's where I had the experience of playing with, uh, with Bobby Moore and Jeff Hurst, um, you know, as a, as a young player playing in the reserves just prior to Bobby going to Fulham and Jeff going to Stoke. Um, you know, so uh, at that magnificent experience of playing in the same, same team as them two. Uh, and then at the end of the season, uh, 1975-76 season, I just got a phone call out of the blue from John. And he said, um, would you be interested in going out to the States and playing out there? So I said, well, why not? Um, play one of the reasons was they were doubling my wages, which did, which helped. But um, you know, it wasn't the, the be all and end all. But I flew out. Um, I flew out to the states. Um, I got there the day they played a game, and I watched the game. Didn't play, but then they played a game uh, three days later. That was my first game, and that was against uh, Pele against uh, and the Cosmos. Wow. Um, you know, so you think, well, 
how much better can this get? You yeah. know, uh, spent all summer there, came back, played again um, uh, for West Ham during the 76-77 season. Um, sort of in and around the first team a little yeah. bit, but not much. And then got asked if I wanted to go back again, which I did do. Mm. Uh, went back and spent another three months out there and playing against people like Jules Best and Eusebio and Beckenbauer. You know, and you're going through all these names and they're legends of the game. And to have the experience of doing that, I'm sure it's shaped my uh, my thoughts and the way I play. You know, it, Definitely. without sort of going, you need to do this. It, there was certain things that probably had an influence on mm. that. Of course. And then I came back and the uh, 70, um, uh, my wife and I were getting married in 78. And uh, it was a... Uh, um, it was the option for her to come with me in 77 and spend three months out in America or stay at home and, you know, we'd save up and which is what we did. Yeah. Uh, and uh, to, to buy our house and get married in 78. And during the 77, 78 season, around Christmas time, Ron Greenwood called me in his office and he said, um, bearing in mind that I hadn't had a break for three years, <laughs> he said, you better buck your ideas up, otherwise I won't renew your contract at the end of the season. Oh, thanks, Ron. That's marvellous. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know. So, uh, but what happened was then I, I, I did make my debut that uh, post Christmas, I think, of that time. Yeah. Uh, and I came on for half a game against Birmingham in place of uh, a fella called Yilmaz Orhan, uh, who, who was uh, uh, playing injured in the first place. And then I made my full debut against Spurs and we beat, when we beat Spurs 5-2, I think, at home. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, so it sort of blossomed from there, and yeah. then it was like a uh, an in and out process, Russ. Where mm. you know, I was in and around the first team, playing on the odd occasion, having little runs in the team, but not establishing establishing myself in the team. Yeah. And then um, uh, obviously we got to the situation around 1980 mm. with the cup final. Uh, and uh, Paul Allen had emerged onto the scene, you know, as a, as a central midfield player and was doing really well. Mm. So it was, again, a similar situation. But then we played the game, I, I can't remember, it might have been Charlton or something like that, just prior to the, so the last game before we played against the, the cup final. Mm. And I scored in the game. And I, someone said to me, that, that might have given you your ticket into the team. And I'm going, well, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then uh, John announced the team on the Friday lunchtime and I was playing, um, yeah. which was, uh, which was not, a, uh, I suppose it was a shock, but it wasn't a shock. It was, it, you know, I was hoping, you know, yeah. that that was the case. I was in around it. I was, you know, fingertips type thing. You know, am I going to get in the team or not? Um, and I, I felt sorry for Paul Brush, who'd been playing, you know, most of the, yeah, most sure. of the season at left back with Frank playing right back and Ray playing in midfield. Mm. Uh, but then John reverted back to um, Ray playing at right back. Uh, Frank went back to left back, leaving the midfield space open for myself. Um, and obviously, John made the right choice because we won the game. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you know, I've never experienced as a West Ham fan anything like what happened in 1980. Obviously, you know, we won the Intertoast Cup in 99. That's the only yeah. silverware we've won since. <laughs> What I mean, you, I know you probably get bored to death being asked that question. Question, but what was it like coming back? Uh, like having obviously won the FA Cup. Obviously, you got the euphoria of Wembley. You know, sure. winning it must have been your career highlight, so to speak. Because Absolutely. well, you know, it's like it's a pity when you're a young lad, you want to win the FA Cup, don't you? As as a kid, you know, you don't necessarily. It was the ultimate, Russ. It was, it was yeah. the ultimate. You know that that and winning the league title, and we we, yeah. we wasn't in a position to win the league title, but it was uh, West Ham were always associated with 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 FA Cups and, and League mm. Cups because of the previous you know sort of sixty four yeah. seventy five et cetera et cetera, and um, you know we we was uh, it, it was something that that West Ham fans um, are um, looking forward to on a on a you know an almost seasonal basis you yeah, know right, you know yeah, we yeah. might not do very well in the league but what we'll do hopefully is do well in the cups and and I, I've, I've said this before and you know I'll, I'll say it again I find it really really strange that West Ham don't always play their strongest team mm. when they're playing in the FA Cup and the league cups because in reality that's probably the only option or opportunity they've got of winning 
uh, any silverware, you know, but they don't seem to put that much uh, um, uh, emphasis on it, you know, yeah. which I find strange. I think it is. Um, I think it's, 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 it's a historic thing. I find it disappointing as well. Yeah, but I think it's a historic thing, isn't it? I mean, you've got a case where I think there's lots of... Um, I think most teams, I think, unfortunately, sort of bottom, bottom half team, so to speak, um, which sure. is what we are at the moment, you know, realistically. Yeah. Um, they, the Premier League is so important to stay in that you're right. It's, it's, it's almost second. But, but you're saying that you're right. I mean, the teams that, that do, you know, have, have a go are usually the ones that actually, and, and put a strong side in, um, are usually the ones that end up winning and, and, and getting to the final. I mean, you know, you look sure. at, you know, I mean, obviously... Villa did well uh, this year and, and stuff like that, and it's you know, particularly in the League Cup final. Um, obviously, they lost, but the, but uh, yeah. you're right. I think it, it's it's for West Ham fans. Yeah, we but we're realistic as well, aren't we? We're never going to win the league, you know. Um, yeah, sure. At the moment, it's you know how quick can we get to forty points? That's sort of our season objective, and then we go on from there. Which you know, sure. eventually, you know, it, it might be a case where we're, we're we're looking, you know, a bit more into you know making sure we're finishing seventh and sixth and stuff like that. But and, um, and I think that's where, where where you're right. It's you know, it's where West Ham are at at the moment. Yeah, exactly. You know, and you know what, what, what it's we've gone through all this process to get here, and obviously the change of the stadium, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and going through mm. that massive change. You know, it's where West Ham are at at the moment. Who knows what's going to happen in 10 years' time? You know, no one knows. You know, so hopefully it's creating a foundation yeah. for, uh, uh, to build on. Um, but is it? You know, that, that's, that's, well, that's... Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, well, it, it's... I'm hopeful that that's what it's going to be. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I personally, I mean, I, I, I love the fact that I played in the, in the 1980 Cup final. It's the last team that West Ham ever won you know you know yeah. so when we come up to the 40th anniversary which we've just done recently yeah. you know people are still celebrating that yeah uh but i'd hate to go to my grave knowing that west ham had never won it again yeah no i get you, you know? yeah. uh and you know I, I just you know it would be uh it, it would be uh tragic if that was the case yeah yeah, I mean, and I think not only the FA Cup, but obviously the eighty five eighty six season. You know, there's. I think when I was interviewing Tony Gale, he said something like there was. He was talking. He was talking to Tony Cotty, and Tony Cotty said there was something like seventeen records that that season's team still held club records, like yeah. most away wins, most away, you know, most yeah. goals scored by partnership, things like that. And again, the same thing. You know, it's 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 great, but yeah, you know, that that season eighty five eighty six is still celebrated. You know, finishing finishing sort of yeah. third and never never sort well, of replicating. Say, if I move to the side, you can probably see that picture in the background. Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what that's what just that's what triggered. Not just. Not was 80 but the 85 86 stuff because that was yeah. such an incredible season as well and obviously you played played 10 or so games in that season as well so you know and yeah, again it, it was well, I, I got injured um yeah. and it was uh, an injury that was uh funny enough uh, uh billy bonds had had a similar type of injury it's to do with the 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 uh, pubic bone and you know the the pelvis um and you know so uh what had happened was <laughs> I, I'd, I'd actually managed to tear a hole in my stomach muscle wall, um, which was about the size of a 50 pence piece. <coughs> and, uh, as a consequence of that, they couldn't pull the muscle together to, mm. to, um, cause it would have restricted movement. So they had to put a, um, a like a, a scaffold in like a mesh and sew a mesh in there. And then I had to do mm. certain exercises to build the muscle back up. So the mesh was like a, a, a scaffold gotcha. for the, the muscle to go back over. And that took quite some time. Mm. Uh, and while that was going on, Neil Orr, who was playing in my position, had, uh, had basically established himself in the yeah. side and the team was doing very well. Yeah. Um, having said that, during that season, you know, I still get reminded about the header at Old Trafford yeah. uh, in the FA Cup um, um, replay up at, um, up at Old Trafford. So, uh, and I'm, I'm very grateful that people still remember that. And, every, you know, whenever I go to any West Ham events, people t talk about that and I'm, I'm extremely grateful that they still want to talk about that, you know. So uh, it was uh, it was an experience. It was um, uh, we we do have a laugh. I did say to Mark Ward and I got interviewed after the game uh, by the by the the television because we was on yeah. the TV, and the commentator said uh, you know about the goal and uh, uh, both Mark and I decided before we go in that 
that we was going to tell a pack of lies. And we, we went in and said that we've been practicing it on the training ground on yeah, a daily yeah, yeah. basis. But what actually happened was Mark miscued it and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Um, so, you know, we, but we did have a bit of a giggle with that one. Yeah. Um, and when I see Waldy every now and again, we, do, we still laugh about that. Yeah, oh, that's brilliant. And I mean, you know, as I said, you're one of, I think it's five, five hammers who, who who did both you know who in sort of the in the modern day so to speak you know sort of history of west ham the two standouts of 1980 and obviously sure. 85 86 and obviously you uh parksy ray stewart alvin and dev you know those those are the five and that's that's an incredible achievement um and and it's something which i didn't realize until i started you know Wikipediaing you a little bit more, Jeff, going and you know, looking at, at the games, and and it's it's an incredible accolade. And again, it shows the difference in the modern game compared to sort of that era where you would you wouldn't get a player hanging around for five years. If you get three years out of him, it's you, you've got a good shout nowadays. Yeah, and it's sad, really. You know, um, you know, because you know you don't see testimonials. If you do now, the players are earning so much money now that they generally uh, donate the money to charity, which mm. is fine. I've got no issue with that whatsoever. You know, we, we I had a testimonial, and you know, it was to supplement uh, my personal financial situation. Yeah. I needed it, yeah. you know, because it was, you know. But, but having said that, Russ, I still believe, you know. And again, you get the question asked every time, you know, don't you wish you were playing nowadays? Uh, if it was purely financial, you'd have to say yes. Of course. But yeah. I think that I think that I was I played in what I would call the golden era of the game. You know, because uh, there was there would be a number of players. I mean, I, uh, someone like Tony Curry, for example. I remember playing against him at Leeds. Mm. You know, legend in the game. Um, you know, playing it. There, there's there was a, a number of people, and you could probably uh, say there was at least one in each team in the first division, which it was then, that you'd pay money to go and see. Yeah. Whereas I'm not so sure that's the case now. No, no, I agree, and I, I think there's, it, it, it's, a, it's a generational thing as well, isn't it? So, and and I think there's, and I think you know, for West in terms of West Ham as well, looking West Ham specifically, I think there's a period. I mean, obviously, the eighties were, were such a period for great football, but great characters, and I think that's what West Ham fans love more. Yeah, you sure. can be Dimitri Payet and be the best player, but you're a horrible character, and yeah. people don't think of you that. Whereas your era. You, as you said, Baldy, Macca, TC, that sort of group, Parksy out. Everyone was a character. Ray, they were all were characters. And then probably sort of the mid nineties period as well. We had Bish and Monks, and and even Razor and people like that. And from then on, the characters have have gone out of the game. You know, you don't get those characters. It's almost too professional now. Football. Um, and I, I agree. It is almost too professional, but it's it's driven by finance. Exactly. And it's You're not totally driven right. by the love of the game anymore. Yeah. Um, well, we, we, because of the situation we was in in respect of the 40th anniversary, there was a number of events that, that we was uh, hopefully going to be um, uh, getting together with. Sure. And we, we, had, we did do a couple before pre-Christmas. Yeah. And, you know, we walk in the room and, you know, everybody's there, um, apart from, uh, I think, uh, Alvin couldn't make it on one occasion and Frank. Lampard could make it on one occasion, but apart from that, everybody else is there, yeah. and we walk in the room, and it's just like it's never changed. Yeah, you know, yeah. just you know, and I think that that's that's the, the the mark of where we are now with the game because you know I I've still I, I still speak to Parksy fairly regularly. Mm. Um, I'll speak to Dev fairly regularly. Um, I'll speak to other people. Ray Ray rings up every now and again. Yeah. Um, Alvin lives around the corner to me and we bump into each other on the odd occasion uh, but you you know there, there's still a camaraderie there Definitely. you know and it's it's like we're, when we walk back into the room and it, we're, it's 40 years on you know we're, we're, we're still it's, it's like walking back into the changing room again yeah. you know with a, with a bunch of people yeah. whereas I'm not so sure that, that no. happens now no. um, with the players because it, it's multicultural uh, 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 you know, a multilingual, and sometimes you, you you're in a, a dressing room with a group of people who you don't, can't understand a word they're talking about. That's true. Yeah, you know, it's true. Uh, yeah. so it's it's a, it, you you it's really difficult to build that camaraderie. Yeah, 
yeah no i agree and and you're right and i think you know as i said you get three years out of a player if you're doing well and also a manager you get three or four years out of it you're doing well as well and i think that's the same true i mean the players i mean you know you're you know, you in in, in sort of the gaily era so to speak you, you had a testimonial almost every year every year yeah, um that's right. And that's, and again, that's, and it's a bit like mates, isn't it? You don't see your mates for your, your best mates. You don't see them for like a year, six months, maybe you see them at Christmas. But then when you get together, like you said, with the dressing room, it just like, it was like you just press pause and then you carry on. And that, that's what, and that's, that's, what, that's what I get through talking to the, yeah. like your, the players in your area and the players in sort of Bishy's area and stuff like that. It's that car- yeah. camaraderie. Right. Anyway, let's, let's talk about players in a bit more detail because I think we, as I said, that whole idea of this channel, it's lovely chatting about all the memories, which is, which is phenomenal, but it's about talking about the players, which meant something to the fans. And so they tend to, yeah. They talk about that they're, you know, whether it's their best eleven or whatever like that. Now, for ex-players, I like to see if we can put a team of eleven together of players that you enjoy playing with the most. Now, I'm not saying it's, you know, it's not always, you know, he's better than him. But you know, if you had to pick, if you had a gun to your head, Jeff, who would you pick for your team? That's the type of thing we do. Um, and so we try and keep it to a four-four-two, just because I'm not very good at video editing um, more than anything. But I have learned all these new positions, which I never knew when I was talking to more oh, experienced right. fans, like, you know, yeah. inside off and, and left, left forward and stuff like that, which is, <laughs> is it's, it's a catastrophe. The exactly. And it's, it's a, it's a learning process. So for, for the, the W pipe, formation, they used to call it the W formation. Oh, you did like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I get yeah. you. <laughs> I'm learning all this. It's brilliant. It's really cathartic. It really sort of like, cause I, you know, I, I feel a little bit, you know, I mean, it's like when people start learning the history of their country and, and their family. I'm, I'm a little not blasé to the sort of the, the earlier period, but I don't know as much as everyone else. You know, I, sure. you know, I know the modern period because that's when I was born. But it's really yeah, yeah. nice. You know, I love history, but I love going. I'm not saying your history, but I love going yeah. back in time and, and finding that stuff out. But in terms of the Pike Eleven, who would be in goal? I could probably guess who your goalie would probably be, to be honest. <laughs> well, I, I was I, I, I played in the same team as Mervyn Day, you did yeah, and I played in the same team as Bobby Ferguson. Uh, but um, uh, Phil Parks, uh, which is probably the one you're thinking of, yeah, um, uh, was probably the, the was easily, if no disrespect to the other no. two, easily the best in my eyes. Mm-hmm. And in, in a way, it was uh, he was around at the wrong time. You know, because yes. yeah. in, in reality, you should have played more for, for England. Mm. But you had Ray Clements and Peter Shilton around at the time as well. Uh, and when, um, England seemed to produce top quality goalkeepers at that particular time. And there was a huge amount of goalkeepers that were coming through. Uh, but Parksy was different class for us. And it was synonymous in the, in the cup run at West Brom. When we, yes. when we went up there and got absolutely yeah. battered. And he, he was absolutely outstanding. Yeah, exactly. And that's someone else put, pointed that up as well. A, a, a fan about that that away. You know, no one really talks about that, but that he he did like eighteen, like fifteen, sixteen, like saves that that day or something like that. Like, yeah, world class saves. Yeah, no yeah. park season. Yeah, yeah, I could I could probably nail that down. Start off with when you was talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's go left back again. I could probably guess left back, but who would you have left back? Um, well, it, Funnily enough, when when you contacted me the other day and you said about this, I was trying to think to myself about, you know, um, I think a lot of the other positions are fairly straightforward. Mm. Uh, But left back is the one that's probably going to be the um, the one that's a bit bit sort of um, uh, more difficult. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, yeah, I get that. uh, Each each of the ones that I played with, for example, have got different qualities. So you've yeah. got, you've got uh, Georgie Paris, for example, who yeah. played left back. He was, um, he, you know, he, he, he played with, with enthusiasm, you know, massive enthusiasm. And he would run around all over the place and do what he needed to do and, you know, you know et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Steve Wolford was like the, the, the epitome of a, a laid back left, left back. You know, he was sort of, oh, well, okay, give it to me if you really want to type <laughs> thing, you know? Um, but, you know, when you look at it from a defensive perspective, then probably Frank is probably the best, yeah. the best that I've played with. I, di- I didn't, I, I never played with Julian Dix. Um, I'd only seen him a few, on a few occasions. But, you know, if, if, I'm, if I'm honest, uh, I would, uh, I think Frank was extremely reliable. Mm. Um, and bearing in mind that he started as a right back and broke, mm. his, broke his leg uh, and had to adapt and, and turned himself into a left fullback and ended up playing playing for his country as well which yeah. or certainly been in the squad 
Yeah. Um, so it, it'd have to be Frank, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good shout. Yeah, as you said. I mean, yeah, you were you're fortunate to play some great hands. Obviously, Georgie Paris, Steve as well. You know, you had some you had some good left backs you, you played with, and uh, yeah. yeah, I think yeah, I know what you mean by Frank. That's a good shout. Okay, let, let's go. Let's go the right back position. Who do we have on right back position? Right, now, now this is this is difficult because okay. it links to the the, the centre back situation as well. Yeah. Okay. You know, so um, you know, uh, Ray was different class when he came when he came to the club as a youngster. He, he was like a breath of fresh air. Couldn't yeah. understand a word he was saying. <laughs> Still can't. Uh, but he, you know, he, he was, you know, he, his passion for the game was incredible. Mm. Um, but Billy Bonds came to West Ham from Charlton as a right back yeah. and got um, converted to a centre back. Uh, and then that's where the issue arises because <laughs> I've got three centre backs. Now, uh, do, I, do I go with Ray at right back uh, and then uh, get rid of one of the centre backs or do I go Bill at right back yeah. and then have Alvin and Bobby Moore as the two centre backs? Because you know that you know well, irrelevant to the balance of the team. We're just, just talking yeah. about the quality yeah. of the player, you know. Because yeah. obviously, you know, you probably wouldn't play Alvin and Bobby Moore in the same team because they're both not dissimilar players. You know, they're they're not uh, out and out defenders as such. They're cultured defenders in my eyes. Um, yeah. I'll probably go with Bill at right back and then yeah. with Alvin and uh, and Bob. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. I, I don't. Um, it, it's, I got asked once, Russ, uh, sadly, uh, just after Bob had passed away, yeah. Um, yeah. To, to speak about him at a, a charity boxing event. Mm. And um, Frank Lampard and Harry Redknapp were actually in the audience. And I said, well, surely you want them to, to speak because they've got more memories of Bob than what I had. Mm. Uh, but the, the fellow insisted, so I went up. And one of the things that, that, um, that I spoke about, Bob, was around his humility. Um, where at, at Upton Park, where the players used to park in the car park, in the school car park there, and then walk through the gates and walk through the double doors in, into the main reception area. Yeah. There was a barrier on the left-hand side, a metal barrier, which the fans couldn't get past pre the game, mm. though, but they were allowed in afterwards. And, and Bob used to stand, when he came to the games, he used to stand just inside that barrier. And every time I or every, every player that walked through there, he would make a point of coming up and shaking your hand and wishing you all the best. He was the captain of the England team that won the World Cup in 1966. Yeah. He didn't need to come up to Jeff Pike and say, all yeah. the best, Jeff, you know? Yeah. So it wasn't necessarily about just the player. It was about the man himself yeah. as well. I get that. Um, you know, it, I've never, um, to, to be in a situation where I played with him and then be in the situation where I've uh, had, um, uh, not dealings, but, you know, interaction with him, you know, uh, I, I can't say anything more positive about Bob himself. And, you know, if I, if I was in a situation where I could, it, to name the best team that you, that were the best players, he would always be in there, he'd be number one. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And that's what's great because also you see the genera- it's a generational thing as well. And that's why for the fans, I, I put a sort of a caveat on that they have to be alive to a scene and play because everyone yeah. to a man would put Bob in just because yeah. he's the legend and he's the, he'd be the number one on any West Ham fans dream 11. But um, yeah. it would have to be. And, and, yeah. and, but what's nice is when I talk to the more experienced fans, um, I call them, um, who <laughs> saw Bob play... <laughs> Experience, experience, <laughs> Jeff. Um, they say the stories they say, and and uh, you know of, of Bob as, as a player, and, and you know you said as, as a as a man really, because you're right. He didn't have any any humidity, you know. As you said, just to you know, he won the bloody Absolutely. cup, and he was yeah. yeah and then and then to be partnered with, with Alvin and, and Billy, that is that is probably you know, and and, and but it's, if you had to say you know like like West Ham trilogy, you've got almost the West Ham's sense of that trilogy there, you in terms of Bobby Moore, Abby Martin, and Billy Bonds. But um, yeah, I mean you know I, I, I think that's that's probably if anyone had to write their their dream eleven, uh, that would be the the back four and back five, I'd say, including the goalkeeper already. Yeah. Um, and, you like had the so, yeah. and you had the privilege. You had the privilege. 
you know, uh, and when I see Bill now, you know, yeah. when we do these events, you know, he's, he's very humble, you know, he, he does what he does. And then, you know, when he played, he used to come in or play the game and he was the first one to leave. He never stayed. He got, wanted to get home to his family, yeah. uh, which is, you know, all credit to him, you know. But, yeah. um, you know, but it's, it's to be in a, a, he, he said something to me one day and uh, we played in a charity football match over at Thurrock. Yeah. And um, uh, he played in the charity football match and I played. Uh, and my, my parents, um, God rest them, when they were alive, they live around the corner from there and they come over to watch it. Mm. And uh, at the end of the game, we've gone up into the bar, as you do, and you're having a, a glass of wine or a beer or whatever. And Bill come over and um, he, we was chatting away and he went, do you know something? And he turned around to my mum and dad and he said, do you know something? He said, uh, I didn't realise what a good passer Jeff was until today. <laughs> you know, uh, and you go, oh, thanks, Bill. You know, <laughs> I played so many games with him, but you didn't realise how good I was when, until until we played a bleak charity game. Uh, but you know, it was it, it, it was the sentiment yeah. more than anything and else, that, yeah. and, and the, the reference to it. You know, so you know, I, I suppose that that's synonymous with the way I played and the way the fans potentially saw me. It was, I was there, but I wasn't there, if that makes sense. I did my job, yeah. and it was one of those things where he probably didn't get as recognised as the Trevor Brookings of this world or the yeah. Alan Devonshires of this world. Uh, but we, we, during that period of time, uh, around 80, 81, when we won the Cup and the following season when we got promoted, mm. I firmly believe that that was probably the, the, one of the strongest West Ham teams because the following season... When we got we got promoted to the first division at Christmas, we was top of the league, yeah. and we was absolutely flying. Flying, um, yeah. uh, but you know, as per usual, you know, uh, post Christmas, you know, decorations. decorations come down, and so the West Ham. <laughs> so. <laughs> and that was something my my granddad God rest his soul, he, he would always say, and I never really understood it. And then going back and looking at all the old videos and stuff, it was like, okay, I can understand where where that sort of you know it's been been in play. But uh, yeah, no, I know what you mean, and and it's it's true, you know. I think, uh, I mean, I, now in the nostalgia area, so to speak, I'm my I mean my sort of education so it's a bit started sort of mid 90s early 90s when i start when i was obviously yeah. young enough to go old enough to go and watch football um and i was the same i i didn't appreciate some players and going back now i appreciate them more so it's like when i interviewed tim breaker the other day i he was a name on the team sheet when i was yeah, yeah. there because it was about ian bishop and trevor morley and david yeah. speedy and the goal getters and clive allen's but actually and I said to him, I said, look, I've got a new fan. So this might sound really, I have to make an honest, you know, I, I, yeah, I didn't yeah. appreciate you as much as I, I do now in terms of what you did. And that's the same with you, Jeff, I think. Sure. People, you're right. It's like, it's people get the, and again, that's the importance of these sort of videos is to record memories of players that people, some players really did to their heart, but others players will remember because, you know, it, memories sure. fog and stuff. And um, yeah, no, totally. I totally get it. It's funny, Bill, going to you saying that like how many years after <laughs> Right, let's carry on. Let's go. Let's go left midfield. Who would you have left midfield then, Jeff? Right now, this is where the, again midfield uh, becomes uh, a slight problem um, yeah. because I, I've got four names uh, for the, the midfield in a four-four-two sort of scenario. Yeah. Um, but if we adapted that slightly we can. and said we're going to play four-three-three. Then it becomes a little bit more difficult, more more easier for me oh, we'll to make it easier. The- four three oh, three. We'll go four three three yeah. then. Let's um, go four three three. If we if we said uh, um, the three uh, midfield players for me would be certainly Trevor would have to be in that group. Yeah. Uh, certainly Martin Peters would have to be in that group, and also I would go with Ronnie Boyce. Wow, what three? Um, uh, Ron, I think, was what was again. Uh, I suppose I, I relate to Ron a little bit. You know, he, he scored the winning goal in, in the 1964 Cup final. Yep. Um, but he uh, he sort of took me under his wing when he when he uh, was first team coach, and I was playing in and around the first team, and he had a lot of words of wisdom. And I was fortunate enough to play um, with him in the reserves and in his last game before he retired, and. Um, Ron was a, a very similar situation, uh, similar to myself, I suppose. He was very underrated, yeah. but was an absolutely uh, uh, vital uh, cog in the wheel 
mm. you know, because Ron, Ron, was, Ron was an excellent footballer, but no one really took that much notice of him. And then mm. you've obviously got Trevor who will do his bits going forward. And uh, how can you leave Martin Peters out of, a t- mm. out of a team? You know, because, you know, it, it, you know, you could go down the route of uh, Bish. You know, you can go down the route of Steve Lomax. Yeah. You know, and all those people. You know, in and around the, the you know the, the the era afterwards, and the, the Martin Allen's of this world, for example. You know, uh, you know, absolute lunatic, but yeah. you know, does does what he does and does it really well. Yeah. But there there was a calmness about the three of them. Yeah. And you know, in the the hustle bustle of a game of football, you need people with with a calm head and you know they, they were synonymous to that and I, I, I did um, have the the distinct pleasure of playing with Mark as well as he possibly can but yeah. to so I, I've been very fortunate I played with all three West Ham World Cup winners you yeah. know at some point you know so I can't leave Martin out no, no. Yes. Uh, so that, that's that's my three, I'm afraid. That's great. We know I'll have to I'll have to figure it out after that, but I don't care, Jeff. I'll figure <laughs> it out. Let's go up front. Who's your three up front then? Well, now, so on the left hand side, I'd have to play Dev. Yeah. Uh, so he, he he was very much an attacking player. Uh, whilst he did all his work defensively, uh, in that sort of system, it would give him the license to do more going forward, uh, and I'd like to think that that was the case. Uh, and then you've got the the the, the strike the strikers uh, as such. Yeah. Um, it's difficult this one because um, when you're playing with three, do you have a central one as a target player, or do you play with different uh, you know uh, different types of players, or do you get them to rotate their positions based around what their talents are? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you you could look at um, uh, TC, and you look at um, Frankie Mac and say, well, they in 85, 86, they were unbelievable. Yeah. You know, and as a as a pair, they were they were terrific. Um, you know, so you probably need to go with them and with Dev on the left hand side, I would have thought. Yeah. But then then I'd go, well, I'd I'd have David Cross on the bench. Yeah. You know, yeah. because you might need him at some yeah. point to, to, to throw a spanner in the works. Yeah. Exactly, um, but you know, I, I, I mean, in when was it? Uh, I'm just trying to think now. Uh, it was. I, I tell you when it was. It was 75, 76 season. Yeah, we had um, uh, John Radford played for us, and he yeah. come over from Arsenal. Mm. Never scored a goal no. um, for us, but what a fantastic player! Um, I've, I've just thought of someone else actually. Now I can't think of it. Um, uh, Pop Robson. Yeah. Uh, I probably need to put Pop Robson in there somewhere. <laughs> so I, I think probably to get some variety in the team, I'd have to leave TC out. I'm afraid. TC out um, and Pop Robson. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. I mean, Pop was brilliant. He was absolutely first class. Um, you know, there's, there's numerous people. I mean, you, you, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. admitting, you know, Alan Taylor he scored two goals in the FA Cup final, two goals yeah. in the semi final. Yeah. Uh, I'm admitting um, Graham Padden, uh, God yeah. rest him, who was fantastic on the left hand side of midfield. Mm. Keith Robson, who was an absolute lunatic, but, you know, <laughs> had, had a, a presence about him on the field. You know, so it, it's, it, it is really difficult. So I'm basing this selection on people that I've had the experience of playing with or being in and around, you know, and uh, uh, rather than players that I haven't because I can't comment on them without no. playing with exactly. or against them. You've got, yeah, exactly. You've got like a, a point of reference, haven't you? You don't, yeah, Absolutely. it makes perfect. And that's the idea. And that's the idea. Because obviously, you know, I think <coughs> we, interviewed, <coughs> we interviewed John Hartson and, you know, he, he obviously wouldn't necessarily put in his team was all like Paul Kitson and stuff like that. Because, again, yeah, yeah. those are the players he's played with. So, Absolutely. That's, that, that's the whole idea. Jeff, man, that's been, it's been absolutely fascinating and amazing and a real privilege talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> I said half an hour. It's been an hour, but I said half an hour. But it's been lovely. Yeah, no, I mean, it's been, it's been a pleasure because, you know, when you, you, you get into this situation and it's an opportunity for... For, to you, uh, for, for me as an individual to, to express my uh, opinions about certain things and sometimes, it, you know, whether they're like to dislike, but to actually have a, <laughs> a, have a chat about the game is, you know, is, 
um, is what we live for, really. Exactly. You know, and everyone has an opinion. You know, it's, it's football. Absolutely. And that's the idea of the 11s. Yeah. Everyone has an opinion. You know, it's, we talk to some of the younger players, some of the younger fans rather, not the players, but younger fans. And obviously, they don't have a point of reference to include, you know, no, Trevor Brooklyn. So it will be people that they, you know, it will be Pyatt's and it will be. Scotty Parkers and things like, and that's the perfect. That's the idea of it. Everyone's got an opinion, but everyone's been so gracious with their time and opinion. So thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate your time. And obviously, thank you to everyone for watching. Obviously, like, share, subscribe, and uh, until next time, for me and Jeff, take care, everybody, and stay safe. See you soon. Bye bye.